Hey, this is Paul from Wondershare Mobile Trans, and in today's video, we are gonna give you some great tips if you are looking to change your iPhone, because when you go to change your iPhone, there are some essential things you need to do to make sure you, A, dispose of it responsibly, and make sure you can keep hold of all your data when you go and get that brand new phone. But before we get into today's video, if you're new around here to the channel, then why not subscribe to the channel, make sure you give the video a like, and of course, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that we have coming up on the channel. But let's get into today's video. Okay, let's talk about the most important thing when you get a new phone, and that is backing up the data on your current phone because you don't want to lose any contacts, videos, pictures, or messages at all. So there are a couple of ways that you can do this, and Apple gives you the option to use iCloud, and Apple also gives you the option to use your Finder on a Mac or iTunes on a PC. And I'm one of those people who've lost all their data before when getting new phones. So let me show you how you can do it so you don't lose any of your data, and first of all, let's start by showing you how to do this on iCloud. To back up your iPhone or iPad on iCloud, the first thing that you need to do is go to connect your device to a Wi-Fi network and then head to the settings app and tap on your name at the top. This will take you to a new window where you can tap on the iCloud option and then you need to locate and access the iCloud backup feature. To start the iCloud backup process, tap backup now on your iOS device and all of that data will start to be backed up to iCloud. And that works really well if you have enough storage in your iCloud, but what if you don't have that storage and you've got more storage on your PC or Mac? Well, you can use the Finder or iTunes window and both these ways are really similar so let me show you how you would do that. First of all you need to access the iTunes or Finder on your Windows PC or Mac and then connect your iPhone using an Apple certified lightning cable. When you open iTunes or the Finder, you need to click on the phone icon to access the device page. You'll find a few options on this page, but make sure you click that backup now button and select this computer so all of your data is backed up to your PC or Mac. Now that we have data backed up using two different methods, it's also important to keep in mind some security factors. Ensure that you don't share your iCloud ID with anybody or your your password and make sure that no one can access your backup on your PC or your Mac. Okay, now you've backed up your data to your PC or in iCloud, you now need to think about getting that new phone and you need to think about what is gonna suit you. So a few access needs in terms of storage, cameras and all of that. So let me talk you through what you need to think about when you're going to purchase that brand new iPhone. First of all, let's talk about the camera because if you're a person who loves to capture moments on their iPhone with the help of high megapixel cameras, then it's important to check out the camera specifications of the devices you're about to purchase. So if you'd like to take a lot of photos and have high quality, you need to look at a pro camera on the iPhones. So once you've chosen your phone, you then need to have a look at the storage. And storage is really important because if you're gonna keep your phone for a long time and take a lot of photos, videos, keep files and documents on your iPhone, you need to make sure you go for a good amount of storage because once you've chosen that storage, you cannot change it. So have a look at the storage options and the price options and make sure you pick the best option for you. And one of the main things for me when checking out a new phone is battery life. So here's one of the things that you'll need to do where if you want a really good battery life and looking to get an iPhone, the iPhone 14 Plus and Pro Max versions or 15 Plus and 15 Pro Max would be the better option because they have more space in the phone to fit a larger battery. And if you use your phone for absolutely everything, you want to make sure that you can get the best and the biggest display. So the Pro Max versions or the Plus versions of the iPhones have a 6.7 inch display, which is really good for watching things like Disney Plus, Netflix, and of course, YouTube. So make sure you have a look at the screen sizes and get the one that fits your needs. Picking the right iPhone model is the next most important step. And I mentioned before that you have a regular phone, a plus size phone, a pro phone, and a pro max, and they all come with their own very specific requirements that you might need. So for example, if you like iPhones, but don't use your phone a lot, then you might want to look at having a regular iPhone when it comes out. 
or if you use your phone a lot and gonna use it for everything, then maybe a Pro Max version is the one for you. But here's the difference. There are sometimes some design differences between the phones. For example, the Pro phones will have three cameras, whereas the regular iPhones will only have two. And that means on the back, we see different designs from both of those iPhones. And at the moment on the Pro phones, there is Dynamic Island, whereas the regular phones only have the regular notch that we've seen for a few years. Also with different iPhone models comes different features, which you will not get on the regular iPhones, which you will get on the Pro versions. On the Pro version, you get a three times zoom camera, where on the regular version, you don't even get a zoom camera, you just get an ultra wide. So if you like to take photos, you need to make sure you pick the right device. And as well as that, you get camera features on the Pro phones, which you don't get on the regular phones. So for example, you can record cinematic mode in 4K, and what you can do is record ProRes video, which is very professional, high quality video on the Pro phones, and you don't get that on the regular iPhones. So picking the right iPhone model is really important so make sure you go and do a good amount of research. Now you also need to think about whether your iPhone needs to be updated because as we get further and further into new iPhones and new iOSs, it means that iOSs on older iPhones are no longer compatible with some of the newer apps. For example, if you're on an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 10, you're not gonna get iOS 17 anymore because Apple sees those phones as obsolete. So if you wanted all the new software features, you would need to update your phone to at least an iPhone 10R. And some features that you're used to on iOS 12, for example, might now not be available on iOS 17. So it's worth having a quick look at whether this is gonna be the right upgrade for you when choosing your new iPhones. Okay, now you've got your new iPhone, you'll need to back up the data from your old version over to your new version. And we're given a couple of ways to do this. So I'm gonna run you through a few ways that you can do this on your iPhone. So follow the next couple of steps and we'll help you get that data transferred straight over to your new device. Let's start by unboxing that new iPhone and then turning it on. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to the restore from iCloud option here and enter your Apple ID and your password. And if you've uploaded to iCloud from your last phone, you can see your backups on a page like this. And all you need to do is select that backup from that screen and it will be nice and easy and it will allow you very easily to move all of your data from your old phone to your new iOS device. That is probably one of the easiest and quickest ways to do it because you can leave your phone alone, come back half an hour later and it's all ready and set up. Up. But there is also another way you can transfer your data if you still have your old device. All you need to do is place these devices close to each other and it will start to transfer. So let me show you how you would do this. To start this process, you would see a pop-up on your old phone and what you'd need to do is press the continue button at the bottom that you would see on there. Once this prompt appears, tap on it which will then show you an animation on your new iPhone screen. Now, scan it using the old iPhone, enter the six digit passcode of your old device on the new device, and log in with your Apple ID and set up your face ID, etc. Next, it will ask you to choose the data transfer method, which you need to select transfer from iPhone. This will start the process of transferring data between two devices. Make sure you keep both devices close to each other during this process, otherwise you might have some issues with that transfer. Okay, now you've got your iPhone all ready and set up. The next thing you want to do is make sure you can personalize it so it's just your phone. It's not like everybody else's. So let me give you a few tips that can help you with that personalization. The first thing that you can do to optimize your new iPhone performance is change the notification settings on your device. This way you can disable all the notifications that are not important and you can focus on the important notifications to respond to them in a timely manner. In addition to this, you can change the ringtone of your iOS device. As all iPhones have the same ringtone, you can face some difficulty identifying your iPhone when it's ringing if there's quite a few people. So have a look through the options and find one that works for you. The next tip is that you can consider using widgets on that home screen because it can get you into apps nice and quickly and means you don't have to go searching for them. And having widgets enabled on your iPhone and put where you need them is probably one of the best ways to personalize your device. 
Now that you have all of your iPhone personalized and that data transferred over, you want to make sure that you have some good security on that phone. And depending what iPhone you've bought, you will either get the options of Touch ID or Face ID. Now, Face ID has been around since the iPhone 10s and is the primary way to unlock all iPhones from the iPhone 10 onwards. So setting up Face ID is a really important feature which I think you need to do straight away in the setup. You can also select a six digit pin which would make it even harder for people to get inside your phone if you were to lose it. And the one feature that you need to turn on is the Find My iPhone feature. This can easily locate your phone if it gets lost or stolen. And make sure you select that send last location option on if you were to lose your phone because if the phone's battery is critically low it will send the last location to the Find my network which might help you find your iPhone. When you get a new phone, you might realize that the battery doesn't seem to be as good as you might think it is, but that's because there might be some things running in the background that you can switch off that would help preserve that battery life. So let me show you the best ways to keep hold of that battery life on your new phone without it running down. The first thing that you can do to save that battery is to close all the apps that are running in the background. Easy enough, you swipe up from the bottom of the home screen and you can just swipe away all of those apps that you haven't used in the last couple of days or weeks. Next is to make sure your phone's software is completely up to date. It might sound strange, but having an up to date iOS can help with that battery performance to ensure that it is running the best it can. This is because new updates bring bug fixes which might have been draining that battery. So, of course, you can go to settings and software update from the general tab of your iPhone, and this sometimes can make sure you get the best battery life out of your phone. And the next tip is probably one of the best tips, and that is to turn off off the app background refresh on your phone. This can optimize your iPhone's battery and turn off those background app refreshes. So to do this, you need to head to your settings of your iPhone, tap on the background app refresh option, and this will open up a new screen where you will see a list of different apps. Now you can easily turn off the features on some of these unwanted apps. And of course, one of the most obvious ones is to make sure that your brightness is not always at full because this will obviously drain that battery quicker than anything else if your phone is constantly on the highest brightness. The next tip is to make sure you take advantage of iCloud and other services that Apple provide. iPhone users have an advantage in that Apple provides them with their cloud-based storage service to help them save their important files and documents. This is iCloud and you can easily save your photos, notes, important documents and other data on iCloud. But it's not just Apple that you can use to help take advantage of cloud-based storage. You can use Google and use things like Photos and Google Drive. iCloud will automatically sync your photos and data but if you were to use Google Drive or Photos, it won't automatically sync them on the iPhone. Sometimes it can be a little bit more beneficial because it means that you can access your Google Drive data with your storage of photos and videos anywhere in the world on any device nice and easily. And finally, if you're going to dispose of your old device, then make sure you do it nice and responsibly. And there are a couple of ways that you can do this because Apple offers a recycling program. Using Apple's recycling program means that you are helping the environmental impact of disposing of that phone because what Apple will do is they will dispose of this in a really responsible and environmental friendly way. You can take your phone into an Apple store and trade it in for money where it'll still be recycled. Or sometimes you can go to third party websites where recycling your device is just as easy. Right, we have given you some really good tips there on how to make sure you can choose the correct iPhone, what features to look for, how to back up and restore your data, and of course, how to help you save your battery life and recycle of your phone in an environmental friendly way. So if this video was useful and you liked it, then drop us a comment below on what you might be getting with your new iPhone. And of course, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, turn on the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of the videos that we upload here on the channel and if you do all of that then we will see you in the next video.